Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to talk about how to extract data from an E01 disk image um, and feed that data directly into uh, hfind or a hash database um, without saving the file. So without doing file extraction per se or not, without saving the file data, I'm going to just extract, extract the file's data, send that to, in this case, md5sum, and then send that hash value that we get into um, uh, hfind and check if it's actually in the database. Okay, so I already have my test disk image, this test e01. Um, I've already uh, copied everything, and it basically has a, a copy of the files that you see on my desktop here. So I just copied them into a USB stick and made a disk image. So I already have um, core utils installed. So core utils, um, you might you might know from a previous video, um, gives me basic utilities that you would find in uh, Linux that are the GNU uh, utilities. So for example, MD5 sum is not usually in Windows, but now I can use MD5 sum. So let's check that we have it. Okay, so we get the help menu so I can see that I do have MD5 sum installed. And I've also installed uh, the newest version of SleuthKit, which is in this case, I think it's 4.6.0. So if I do uh, hfind, which is the um, one of the SleuthKit utilities that we want to use, hfind-v, we can see the version number. So SleuthKit version 4.60. So we have hfind, or the SleuthKit, installed in Windows, and we have core utils also installed in Windows. And those will make it very easy to be able to do um, different tasks. So on my desktop, if I do dir, dir on the desktop, I can see that I have my test e01 file. Now this is an expert witness format file, um, and um, yeah, so we have access to it. So let's start to analyze this file. The first thing I need to do is find out what partitions are available on this test e01 file. So I can use the sleuthkit command mmls and then test e01 and that should tell me the partition table okay so whenever i run that we see a couple different things in here but um, i can already tell the most interesting is probably going to be this win 95 fat 32 uh, partition um, and i can see the start of the partition is uh, offset 128 and then the end is 4130943 and this is the biggest partition that i see um, and it looks like it's the only one with a file system, so I'm probably interested in this this partition if I want to access um, all of the data that was in the file system. Now, there are some uh, unallocated space before and after the partition, but they don't look very big. You know, I might want to check them for some hidden data or something like that, but in this case, I'm mostly interested in the partition with the file system installed. Now, what I need to get is the actual uh, starting offset, the starting offset, so 128, okay? So that's the important number I need to remember. So next, I want to actually see if there are files in that partition, what the files are. So I can use the sleuthkit command fls, and then I want to give the offset, which is dash o, fls dash o, Actually, I'll bring up the help menu here just to uh, just to give a reference. So I want to run FLS and then dash O is the image offset that I want to look at. So in this case, where the uh, partition is that I'm going to be analyzing. So dash O offset and then the image file itself. Now, if I do that, I should at least see some um, some file system data. OK, so let's try this FLS dash O. And then my offset was 128. Your offset might be different. And then my image is test E01. So if I run that, then I can see um, we have a couple different things here, but basically this RR is a regular, um, regular file and this DD is a directory. So we have the system volume information directory, which is pretty standard for Windows. And then I have these regular files and most of them, like I said, are from the desktop. They are uh, links and PDFs and links and one executable. Uh, most of these are link files. Okay, so now um, we're able to um, uh, get some information from FLS. First off, the uh, file name and this number 
is the inode address uh, that FLS is showing us. Basically, the location or the address where the data actually is. Okay, so we can extract data in two ways. Um, the first way is using a tool called fcat, and fcat is also part of the sleuth kit. So I can run fcat, and I'm going to bring up the help menu. So fcat basically um, lets you extract the data for a file from uh, the disk image. Remember, this is all about the disk image. So we can run fcat, and then I still need to give it the offset, just like before, and our offset was 128 to the partition. And then, um, just kind of skipping ahead, I have this file path and the image. So the file path and the image. Well, our file path, this is actually the root of our physical disk, the root of our physical disk. So our file path is just the name of the file. There is no special file path here. So for example, I'll try this winhex.link file. Okay, so the file path, I can type win, uh, was that a capital H? Win capital H, hex.link, and then the name of our di disk image. So in this case, I have fcat, and then dash O is the offset, 128 to the first partition that we're interested in. Winhex.link, is the file name that we're interested in, and then test E01. So basically I'm saying, find this file and get all of that file's data. And then if we just hit enter, it will print that data to the screen. We're not actually doing anything with it. Okay, so enter. Now I can see the, the file's original uh, data. Okay, so now we actually want to do something with that data. Okay. Um, actually, while I'm here, I'll, I'll mention something very quickly. Uh, fcat has this dash s switch, and basically the dash et and the dash et s switch um, displays slack space at the end of the file. Okay. Now slack space is not being displayed by default. We're only getting the file data, but we could display sl slack space. And sometimes that's very interesting. Um, and I'll, I'll show you why that's important in a second. Okay. So just remember, uh, slack space is not being shown right now. And we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. So what I really want to do, I have all of this raw data for when hex dot link, uh, uh, file. And I want to be able to hash it. Well, since I'm already extracting the data directly, I have fcat-o 128, my offset, winhex.link, test e01, and that extracts the data directly. I can just pipe that, which is the, um, on my keyboard, if I type shift and then um, the key that's right above the enter key, I get this pipe and it's basically an up and down um, yeah, pipe. I don't know what else to call it. A pipe. Um, uh, it's not a, it's not a one. Um, sometimes you find it, um, to the left of your one on the keyboard. Sometimes it's above the enter key. Um, but it's a very specific thing called a pipe. Okay. So, um, I hope you can find it on your keyboard. So, um, I have this fcat, uh, getting all of the files data and then I'm piping that into one of the core utilities that I've installed called MD5 sum, MD5 sum. Okay. So then if I uh, run this command, then I get the hash value. And then this star dash means it was piped in. So this is data that was piped into MD5 sum. So what this is doing is taking the, the files data, piping it into MD5 sum and producing the hash output. Okay. Now notice our in our um, hash value ends with 07409. Okay. So that's something we need to remember. So what I want to do now is show you a slightly different way. So, so far we were using fcat with the file name. I'm going to use icat, icat, which is the um, basically cat for inode. Um, to try to get the file data using the inode. And iCAT and FCAT work very, very similarly, just a little bit different. And I tend to use iCAT more than FCAT. Okay, so um, what I need to do first is go back to my FLS command, okay, and then show all of the files. Now, what I want to do is get the um, uh, inode address. And you can see the inode address right after um, the, the file type. 
or the yeah the type then i can start to build my icat command okay so icat works pretty much the same if i do help so i'm going to i'm going to get the data for this md red file so number 10 or the inode number 10 so if i run icat to get the help menu so icat and then um, it's asking for the image offset. So we have to give it the offset again, which is 128. And then the image is test E01. And then the inode number. So the inode number goes after uh, the image in this case. So in that case, it's 10. So I would run icat-o 128 test E01 10. Now, if I run this, I'm just going to give the data direct. Uh, the data is going to be coming directly to the um, uh, command prompt. So let's run that. And there's all of my data coming through the command prompt. OK. Yeah. So let's close that. OK. So what I actually want to do is just like with fcat, I want to pipe this data into MD5 sum. OK, now this was a PDF file, so I'm extracting all the data for the PDF file, piping it directly into MD5 sum. OK, and then we get obviously a different hash because it's different data. So let me go back to FLS. And we had this win hex link and it is inode 21. OK, so then instead of 10, inode 10. Mm -hmm. Instead of inode 10, let's do inode 21. 21. And then we get this 0749409 nine hash value. Okay, so that looks about the same. Just to confirm, let's go back to fcat. fcat with md5 sum. Okay, so we're at least extracting the data from the same place, right? So we're actually getting the data from the um, um, uh, disk image correctly if we use icat or fcat but is this the same as the original file well i have winhex.link um, the the original file on my desktop it's this link file right here so i can just run um, md5 sum and then winhex.link this is coming from my my desktop not from the image file and then we get 0749. So I'm actually extracting the correct data from the disk image if I'm using iCAT or FCAT. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's basically what I wanted to show is you can use iCAT with the offset, the disk image, and then the inode to um, extract the data directly and feed that data directly into MD5 sum. Notice I haven't saved the data anywhere. I'm just extracting this directly into memory and hashing. OK, and then uh, same for fcat, basically doing the same thing, except instead of using the inode, I'm using the link file or the file name itself, the file path, um, and then piping that all into md5 sum. And I get the same value, hash value, as if I was just hashing the original file, except it's coming from the suspect disk image. OK, um, so the next thing I want to talk about was that dash s switch. So if I do, let's go back to yeah, fcat is OK. If I do dash s, then I am including, I am including slack space for the file. Okay. So if I'm including slack space for the file, then I should get actually a little bit more data, which means my hash value should be different. Okay. So if I hit enter, yep. So we get this AECC instead of 07409. So I get a different hash value whenever I include slack space. And that's because slack space in the system was actually um, uh, saved whenever I made a copy and there was some slack available. So um, just be aware that um, if you're reading an inode, um, let's say if you're reading all of the data manually, then you might include slack space and not know it. If you do, then you'll get a different hash value. You have to get only the data that's related um, directly to the file and not slack space. Um, now, each tool will do this a little bit differently. So just be aware that um, be aware if the tool is including or not including slack space whenever it's trying to hash files. OK, so the next thing I want to do, we have the hash value, right? But I actually want to check this against my database. OK, so let's say that I have a, a hash database. Actually, let's go ahead and create a hash database. So I have some files um, on my desktop. So 
So let's say I want to, uh, which one do I want to use? I want to use MD red. So I'm going to do MD five sum, and then uh, I'll just do MD red guide. And then that will give me a hash value, right? But what I actually want is to save this into hash.db. Okay. So now I have this hash.db file, and this is going to be my database. So I have hfind installed, and I need to use hfind to create a hash database um, index. So I need to do dash i for index, and then the type of index is md5sum. And then the, the hash file itself, or the hash database itself, is called hash db. So hfind dash i md5sum hash db. That should create an index for the hash file that or the hash database I just created. Okay, so index created. And here we go. Okay, so now we have our index files. Uh -huh, and this one too. We have our index files. So now I can try to check if um, my hash value actually uh, uh, is in that hash database. So here we have our fcat s. Uh, let me remove the s. Let me do the icat actually. Yep, so ICAT-0128 test 21. So we're extracting the winhex link data, feeding it into MD5SUM. Now this isn't very good because I get not only the hash, I also get this extra little um, uh, text here. So I need to cut this. Now cut is a um, another uh, core utils utility. So I can use cut dash D and this is the delimiter. I need to use double quotes with a space dash F1. What this does is says dash D is the delimiter where we cut at. Here I'm saying an empty space. So cut at an empty space, which would be this space here. And then dash F, the, the, um, what is it? Fragment or uh, field field that we want is the first field. So basically cut at the space and give me the first field. Okay, so I should, if I run this, just get the hash value. Okay, so now I've removed the um, uh, extra extra field. Okay, so now <laughs> what we can do from here is feed this or pipe this directly into hfind with um, uh, what was the database name? Hash.db. Hash.db. Okay, so if I run this hash not found. Well, why is the hash not found? Because we just fed in um, 21, which was win hex link. So let's find using FLS, FLS, let's find the, what was it, MD red or MD next? I don't remember. Let's do both of them. So it was either the MD red or MD next guide. So it's either 10 or 14. So let's check um, Okay, so again, we have ICAT-O128, the offset is 128. And then I want to check inode 10, get that data, feed that into MD5SUM, get only the first part of the hash value, and then feed that into the hash DB. So if I run that, then hash not found, so I guess it was 14. Aha, okay, so here, um, the actual file was MD next, so that was at inode 14. We extracted the data directly from the um, uh, uh, test E01 file, fed it into MD5SUM, make sure you only get the hash value, and then run hfind hash db um, directly. So now, uh, if you wanted to run a script, and I'll probably show this later, um, running a script just uh, uh, loop over all of the inodes, extract the data, and then run that against hfind. Now remember, we haven't actually extracted, we haven't saved any of the file data. So this is all happening in memory. We're not writing anything to the disk. We're just reading from the disk. Okay. Um, so uh, now I'm using here just FLS-0128, but I can also do FLS recursively and list all of the files. So what I would do is go through and for all of the regular files, get the inode number of each file hash it, and then feed that into hash db. And that could be a, a pretty quick and easy script to write, okay? So that's a little bit today about um, 
extracting data directly from a disk image using SleuthKit, and then also checking that data against a hash database without saving the file. Okay, so that's it today for today. Thank you very much.